Check out my new blackboard. The uh, blackboard uh, sits in the stand. It's uh, freestanding. I can move it anywhere I want. I can flip it over to the other side. And I can flip it up on end. All depending on the mission. If you want to see how I build it, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do today. Well, welcome to another Memphis Monday. Remember last week we we made the uh, uh, cork board. Now this work week we're going to make us a double-sided uh, chalkboard, a blackboard. Uh, if you remember, gee, it's been months now, but uh, we built the uh, whiteboard. Well, you know, I promptly broke that because I, I made the front of it out of glass. Well, this is going to be made out of wood. It's going to be a blackboard, a chalkboard, and I think it's going to be a... Um, it's going to be pretty nice. It's going to have stand and all kinds of stuff. Let me uh, finish this cut and I'll show you the design I think I've come up with. First uh, design feature I've come up with is the actual size of the blackboard. Uh, the size that I've uh, decided on is the size or the ratio of the side here to the top of a standard sheet of paper. But anyway, it, uh, it, it, it gives the proportions of the blackboard a familiar look, which is important. Okay, here's design. what I have in mind. The blackboard itself will be independent. Uh, it won't be attached to the stand uh, physically uh, so that I can take it out of the stand and put it somewhere else if I want to. Uh, the stand will, it will sit in the stand and it'll slot, I'll put a slot down here at the bottom. So it will sit down in the stand and then there'll be a back brace. I've got it just indicated right here. It'll be leaning against that back brace. Okay, so the first thing to do is uh, we need to paint uh, that piece of plywood. We just ran myself out of uh, <clears throat> primer. So I'm just uh, using some old house paint I found for primer. The uh, chalkboard paint claims that the surface needs to be primed. So the other side of this uh, piece of plywood is already primed, but this side isn't. Look in your garage. I bet you have a about 10 cans of old house paint. What I want saved. here is I want these uprights here for the frame to be an inch and a half square and I want the legs here to be an inch and a half thick. Well commercial oak doesn't come that way uh, so I'm gonna have to here I'm glue it up the myself. Legs. I'm taking a, a couple of three-quarter inch pieces of oak two, two feet long actually 60 centimeters and gluing them together but I'm gonna try something different I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot them together with uh, with a couple of brads okay let's try the uh, let's try the brad idea never seen this before That clamped them pretty good right there. And I only put some clamps on it. Now the theory is those brads will keep these things from sliding, you know, crossways to one another. I don't know why it won't work. I can really uh, gorilla grip these uh, 
clamps. I got all the stock uh, glued up. There's the rest of it down there. All right, let's uh, go over and do and some painting. I gotta stir this up. The directions say stir it up before you use it. Stir it up while you're using it. Stir it up after you use it. They're pretty big on stirring it All up. All right, let's do some painting. You ever make a blackboard before? Me either. Well, I'm putting on the second coat. Uh, with all this uh, waiting for glue to dry and waiting for paint to dry, I'm uh, I'm working on those clamps. Remember, we were converting those clamps over to some a bigger, bigger handle. So I'm doing that, uh, doing that today too because I need to get it done, and this job's taking so much, uh, so much weight. No, I got nine more clamps uh, done. So that gives me a total of 18. That's not uh, too bad considering that wasn't even the job for today. But in the meantime, while we were working on clamps, the, uh, the blackboard has been painted uh, two coats on either side, letting that dry just a little bit more. Our glue's dried on those uh, on the frame. So it looks like we can start Single doing some construction. Work on is putting the edging around the outside of the chalkboard. The edge, the final dimensions of this chalkboard will will uh, dictate the size of the frame. Here's what we got going on. These are some. These are the practice pieces here. Now what we'll be doing is we'll be taking some of this edging you just saw me cut. And we'd be putting a rabbit, I mean a dado, down the center here. And then that dado will fit on that blackboard just like that. Here's my uh, dado setup. All it is is two uh, saw blades with a small chipper blade in them. These are half inch nails. I think they're about the smallest you can get. The reason I'm trying this is because I want to make sure the nails don't crack the uh, wood. Okay, here's a vital point if you use this kind of edging, this kind of trim. Um, the trim, you, you put the trim on so that the board comes right to the end of that notch right there. You don't take, you don't cut the trim where it comes all the way out to here because then the trim won't come around the corner. Now remember these nails are going through both sides of the trim and yeah, through the board. see the edge right there. So now I just cut that put this piece of trim on, line it up on this edge, and you can see that the edge of this, the blackboard there, comes right, right to the okay, end of the data. Okay, there's our blackboard so far. Pretty proud of it. Next, uh, next operation is to uh, run it through the router table and uh, round over those edges on the uh, trim. You can see that this is the current profile of the trim here. It's kind of squared off. I'm going to run it through the, here's our practice piece. I'll be running it, running it through the router and it'll be rounded over like that. This thing's looking pretty good so I'm going to, I'm going to go around and Put some wood filler in the brad marks. 
Okay, this is a look at some of the joinery I'm using for the, uh, this is the horse, uh, I mean the vertical part of the frame. And this is the leg. And in the leg, I'm putting a little uh, mortise here for the leg to sit in like that. And then I'm putting a couple of dowels through the leg into this. Now this, the dowel and the mortise and all that, none of that is for strength to hold it up or anything. I'll have angle braces that'll come across here and across here. Uh, this joinery down here is only to keep this, uh, it's just an anchoring point to keep this thing from wobbling back, sliding back and forth. Uh, and, and but staying in the middle. Cut this out by hand. It's really pretty easy. Just get you a sharp chisel and stay inside the lines. It may seem a little tedious, but Actually, it's, I'm not really into traditional uh, woodworking, but it's kind of peaceful. And you just chip it, just chip out everything that needs to be chipped out. I mean, a real traditional woodworker probably do this in about five minutes. Before I put anything together though I'm going to uh, run it through the router and round over the edges. Didn't get the dowels to work, they weren't long enough. And I didn't have uh, I didn't have anything else I didn't want to go to the store. But anyway um, so what I'm doing is I'm just running some long screws in. Now these screws will provide absolutely no support for this rail at all. So I don't want you to think that, if, that I think that these screws are going to do anything. The only thing these screws do, plus the glue and the mortise, is to anchor this, this vertical piece here to this position. The torque on this thing is going to be handled by diagonal braces that will be put right this here. This is an old jig from table making. That oak is some tough stuff. Now the last major uh, construction thing here is this is the pocket right here that the chalkboard's going to sit down in and I need to cover this bottom and I'm going to cover it with this piece of I'm going to shoot this right bottom here. thing in with uh, a few brads or staples. Be able to test drive this thing. And when you get that side filled, you just flip it around. Both sides of the chalkboard are identical. Well, it's the next morning and I'm, I kind of rushed last night to get this thing up where we could see it and give it a test. Check this out. Well, this thing's got a, uh, you know, a, a slant to it built in here, but it's not it does, it's not sl uh, leaning back enough. It's not leaning back enough to. Uh, make it stable. Um, 
Now the logical thing to do would be to somehow clamp it right here, put a little catch or something on it, but I don't want to do that. Um, let's take a closer the, look at it. Chalkboard, kind of in a, at a, we're looking at it on the edge here. Uh, so you can see that it, it has a, a slight angle to the rear, but it's not enough angle to uh, make it stable. Let's go check, uh, let's go check that angle. Actually knowing this angle is of dubious value, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'd just like to know. I think it's around 5 degrees. 6.7 degrees. I think I'm going to double that angle. Okay, what I'm doing is uh, installing little blocks, little blocks of wood. In behind here and just putting some uh, bigger screws in, longer screws. Now I'll see if that gives us any, uh, any more stability. I'm going to sand her down a little bit and then we're going to put some finish on here we've never used during a video. I don't know which one yet, but it'll be something new. I think we're going to use this, uh, some of this tongue oil finish. We've never done this on video yet. Let me show you something that's been finished in that. When I was going through a recycled wood phase, I built this uh, stand for my uh, lathe and it's finished in tongue oil. Let's uh, go see what it looks like on oak. It's supposed to uh, put on a thin coat, let it sit overnight, and then buff it with uh, steel wool. Well, it looks pretty good to me. Okay, it's about uh, it's about drum roll time. And as a finishing touch, we're going to put wheels on it. Well, I guess that does it for another Memphis Monday. Uh, I think we uh, got our money's worth today. That uh, tongue oil uh, came out real nice. It doesn't look anything like the sample I showed you, but it came out pretty nice. Our, uh, I think this would be a nice little uh, addition to the shop. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, make sure you comment and go to Facebook and share and like and all that business. But most important, what is it? Be back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday.